has been awesome uh, to get a real sense of how this is helping you grow. And, 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 you know, if you're someone who's kind of struggling with it a little bit, like know that there's other people that are seeing real breakthroughs and you should look at that not as like, Oh no, they're succeeding. I'm not. You should look at it as like, there's a chance like, like there's, uh, this is working. It's working for other people. If it can work for them, it can work for me. Right. So that's what I want you to, to glean from that. So what, uh, th throw it out. Right, let's start off with some successes. Like what are some successes that you've had this week? I feel like I can visualize myself jumping like so much more. I think it might be because of like the workouts that we've been doing have been a lot of like tuck jumps and stuff, but like, I feel like I can visualize that a lot more, which is like really important, obviously. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And, and again, like, you know, we talked about this, was it last week or the week before when you, when you start combining the physical with the mental, that's when it gets really good. Right. So in that case, you know, you're, you're doing some of this mental work and then you're going out and you're actually like, you're, you're, you're getting a feeling inside of you, right? You're getting yeah. emotions. You're, you're getting all these, um, uh, hormones going through your body that are telling you this is good. You're succeeding. Right. Um, and, and you're getting neuromuscular patterning, write that word down. If you want to learn something, neuromuscular patterning, that's, the process of training your muscles to react the same way over and over again. So it's just muscle memory is, is kind of the layman's term that we use for it. Right. So, um, and, uh, and so, yeah, cool. Love it. Next up. Who's got a, who's got a success. Um, previously when I was visualizing, I had a lot of trouble with like, visualizing a lot of mistakes that kind of got in my way of visualizing and then I would kind of come out and then like get unfocused so this week I had a lot more successes and like less mistakes so I thought that really helped with my visualization awesome love it cool good job great job um hey let's make sure you're muted everyone make sure you're muted unless you're the one talking uh with me so we don't get that feedback so okay who who's next start visualizing in first person which was a good change yes yeah that's where we want to get to right where we can see it in first person you know like we're looking like this so that by the time we get to the game boom it's just like it's already happened we know it it's comfortable right yeah okay who else Give us a success, even a little success. Even if you feel like it's a little teeny and see witsy, itty bitty, teeny weeny. Hey Josh, I'll give you mine. I know uh, like uh, a few of us have mentioned, it's difficult to keep that visualization straight on for however long you're doing it. Uh, when I was visualizing this week, I was able to sustain a, an absolute uninterrupted visualization, which was the first time for me. Um, yeah. Because maybe a noise throws you off or like something around you happens and it's it's natural just to come out of it. But I was able to sustain this week one full on visualization that was that was pretty cool. I went in and then came back out and that was it. Like there weren't any other times where my mind wandered elsewhere, which is a huge improvement for me. Cool. That it, Yeah. That's awesome. And that's important. I'm sure that resonates with a lot of people because I've had messages from, from a lot of you, uh, a lot of you, you guys. Um, yeah. And, and hopefully the idea is that you'll get to the point where you're like Dustin Watton, where you're on the bus with team USA and they're playing loud music and telling jokes and jumping around. And I'm on the phone with you doing a game ready. And you're just like, Oh, I'm good. Keep going, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's when you know you, you you've got it made um cool very good very good uh, any others someone else want to share a, a victory success an improvement here let me take the chat away because that made the name so small i can't read any of your names going on here Boop. there we go i'll just go into the 
the people bar over here. Caitlin Allen, can you can you tell us something, either a success or something you're grateful for that we're doing with this program? Yeah. So a success I had this week was like everything was a lot more clear than from like the previous times I visualized everything. So I thought it was a lot more successful. Cool. Just a little bit more clarity. At least see things more clearly. And that's, mm -hmm. and we talked about it maybe a couple weeks ago, but you know, when we talked about the free throw shooting study that they did in Australia with Dr. Uh, Richardson, um, what they found was those who had that more detailed visualizations actually saw greater improvements in their free throw shooting. So the more detail you guys can, can add in there, uh, the better, you know, see the blades of grass, feel the blades of grass, feel the sand, just like sift through your fingers. Right. Um, and, and, and so that can be just trying to like add the extra little details. Okay. I had a question about Go ahead. perspective. Um, so do you think that it's better? So obviously it's better to visualize in like first person, right? You said? Yes. Okay. Because yeah, sometimes I visualize like and I'm like looking at myself, but I feel like it's more um, like successful when I do it like m through my own eyes, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's a, my, my question to you is like, which which do you feel leads to like the greatest you know improvement yeah definitely like first point of view because then you can like get like your timing more down and stuff rather than just like what it's that, that would, it's just like the same as like watching a game if you're just looking at yourself from like outside so i feel like it's better to like have that like first person point of view yeah yes i agree great very good all right i'm gonna go down the list i'm gonna pick a couple more people we're going to go with Nora Shatton. Nora, can you share with us? Yeah. Um, this week, I did, like, a couple on blocking, and I thought that when I was blocking, um, like, before, I hadn't really been as focused on the footsteps, and I think that this week, I, I was able to visualize my feet better. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, before, I was just kind of just moving without really focusing on the individual footsteps. So I think this week I did a better job of that. And that cool. Helped. So like in your visualizations, maybe you're like seeing first person. And so you're not necessarily like looking down at your feet. Right. Right. And this yeah. week I also like did like multiple kinds of like blocking, like different, like, like a step close or like, like a swing block. And so I think that was like, helpful. For that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Variety is good with that as well. Um, and then, you know, it's good if you can combo that with a little physical, like say, say you guys are struggling. Cause I know some people are like, I mean, we all do this sometimes depending on where our mind's at right before we do some visualizations, but like, Hey, if you're going, oh, I just can't, like, I'm not seeing it very well. Well, why don't you just say, okay, time out, go out and just, do, I mean, you could do it right there, right? Just do some physical reps and then jump right back in. Okay. And if you have to start over, that's fine. But like do some physical reps. You can actually feel it, see the footwork, go right back to it. Oh yeah. Now take some more reps mentally, you know? So any visual cues that can spark your, your visualizations are good, whether it's video or uh, actually seeing, you know, just going out and doing it real quick and feeling it and seeing yourself do that, you know, look at your feet while you're doing it. I love it. Good job. Good job, Nora. Thanks. Yeah. Um, how about Kylie Bell? Hi. Hey, Kylie. Um, I was able to see other players um, like play the ball more, and so I could kind of get that connection, which I didn't get before. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We're going to talk about that a, a little bit today. So, um, all right. I love it. And then I have who, who's uh, who's Zavi Nanny. <laughs> okay, so I really I noticed that in my visualizations there it's just me there. There's really no one else around watching me. So I feel like without the pressure of people watching you, it's ten times better to imagine yourself doing it. 
Cool. Cool. And in other words, you, you like it, like there's not all this pressure. Yeah. Does that, um, and then are you saying like you want to add people into your visualizations or you, you just, you want to keep them out? Well, yeah. Cause I feel like I'm just way less nervous when I'm visualizing myself without anybody else watching me. Okay. How do you think that'll translate when you play? Are you worried about that at all? Um, not real. I don't think it's been an issue before. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that, and that's the thing for everybody, it's going to be a little different. So that's why I ask you how you feel about it. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, it's, you, you can get a sense of that. And that's sometimes when I do this, I start, I don't like to start with an athlete right before a, a big match. I like to start during practice so they can get a feel for it. Right. Um, it's, it's like, uh, you want to prime it just a little bit. You want to, you want to Im improve on it. So cool. All right. I like that. Um, and, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's, that's good. I think that's good. Olivia, did you want to share something? You just unmuted yourself. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. I had trouble last week with kind of visualizing myself in first person. I kind okay. of always just like visualize myself, like watching myself do it. So I like kind of struggle with that, but I feel like it got better this week. Okay. Do you have a GoPro? Uh, yes, I just don't know where it is, but I do. <laughs> All right, use use duct tape your cell phone to your head. I don't know. <laughs> <To your forehead. laughs> oh, that's extreme. I'm just being funny, but you know, if you can if you can get a camera like a GoPro and just take a few reps, some blocking reps, some swings, some passing, and and then just watch that back. That's an awesome way just to prime yourself, just to kind of get used to seeing yourself, you know, operate in first person. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if there's any first person volleyball games out there. Usually they're from a third person perspective. There's right? on Instagram. Like, I feel like it's, there's always like a couple of clips on my feed. Like, I don't know how to look it up. I guess just like volleyball Instagram pages, mm -hmm. but like, I see a lot of like GoPro first person Film. There you go. Guys, there's a really cool video from um, UCSB, the San Santa Barbara men's team. They that like did a whole practice with putting the GoPro on different players. So sometimes it's on the blocker or the hitter or defense setter, and like they show all the different views, and it looks so cool. So you guys should all look it up. Just uh, I think it's just probably like UCSB GoPro volleyball. Or yeah, there's about ten videos, but the first four are from live practices and the rest were like it's awesome it's like mesmerizing so watch the first four yeah i'm sure if you went to youtube and you just punched in volleyball gopro like you'd probably come up with a ton of videos i know uh one of my old teammates who's a pro volley pro beach player casey patterson he does he does that every once in a while too so yeah cool does that does that sound good that that uh that good all right. Well, that's awesome, guys. I, I love hearing the different successes that, um, that, that you've had and how we're improving and each week. And um, uh, I think there were, hold on, there was, there was some, a couple of things I just wanted to say to tie up what we were talking about. Um, and I, but I think we covered them with your guys. I wanted to talk about uh, some of those things, but I think we covered them just um that ability to see yourself in, in first person priming your visualizations through either watching, you know, something uh, that helps, you know, you help stimulate seeing that first person vision or seeing yourself on video succeeding or, you know, just actually go do it for a second right before um, you do your visualizations. All those things will help make it easier. Oh, then the other thing I was going to add that we talked about for a few people this week, uh, a, a couple messages I sent back and forth with a few of you um, was about how do I sustain it or how do I get like more in deep so I don't fall out, right? And one of the things I suggested is music. And in fact, um, 
you know, we we do have game readies that that usually when we have game ready recordings, um, we will add in some music. Uh, you know, like when we go into the place of nature, and um, but uh, but when I but when I created the portal, I didn't have a chance, and I still haven't had a chance to get to the studio to just uh, or, or to my studio maker and 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 kind of fine tune some of that stuff, add that stuff in, but that, that can help as well. Um, sometimes you will like, you see professional athletes all the time. You, they listen to music right before, you know, maybe you have a favorite song that gets you pumped. Maybe that's your song. I, there's nothing wrong with doing a, a game ready while you're listening to your favorite song. If it gets like, you know, they say the juice is flowing, right? It gets it gets those chemicals moving in excitement and and uh, allow you to get into a almost a euphoric state or a hype hyped state where the chemicals in your brain allow you to uh, visualize better. And and d does that make sense? Cool. So, all right, I want to leave us with that. All right, then uh, let's go ahead and get into this week's game ready. I'm try now. I'm now. I'm. I'm. I was like. I was studying what our next one is gonna. Our next animal, and now I'm like, did we do? Uh, what animal did we study last week? Lion. The lions. What we studied, or did we do the game ready with the lion? Oh. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know that one. We did the we lion. Did the, the lion was awesome, huh? We did the game ready with the beaver, maybe? Yeah. yeah. And we studied the lion. We did the lion. That's what we did. We did the game ready with the beaver. And we See, studied I got the lion. Out. Yeah, so we did Gowie for our game ready. Yeah. And uh, and and then we did um, core for our, our uh, study. Okay. Cool. We got another cool animal that we're going to use uh, that we're going to study today. That is one of my personal favorites because I uh, it's my daughter's favorite. So okay, um, but uh, yeah, let's do uh, let's do a game ready uh, with core. All right, you guys ready? Like, just kind of get yourself like in that game time headspace. Right? Who's geared up? Who's got their gear on? Show me your gear. Show me who's got gear on. Do we got, does anybody have gear on today? No? Me, but I don't have my gear on. Oh, that's cool. All right. So you got your gear I'm on? I'm always in emergency gear. Literally, it's all I wear now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's time for, uh, it's game time, right? It's time to do a game ready. So, just kind of get yourself in this space where you're envisioning, you know, what's that pregame look like for you, right? Where are you going? Get in your head right now. Maybe you have a favorite tournament. Um, maybe there was one that was supposed to be this weekend. <clears throat> but go ahead and just put yourself in this head space of like of thinking of a specific tournament. The more specific we are, the better, right? So let's get specific with that. And awesome. And then I want you to uh, just start focusing on your breath. Get to a spot where you're relaxed first. You know, make sure you're sitting and uh, sitting down in a place where you're relaxed. You know, if you can, keep your back straight. Um, you know, if you're outside or something, you know, and you you can't quite keep your back straight or something, you're hunched over. Like that's fine as long as you're comfortable and you can breathe. Okay. And I want you just to start with your focusing on your breath. I want you to breathe in through your nose for four counts. One, two, three, four. Out through your mouth for six counts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just get that going. Get that breath going. We call this a respa breath. Take that respa breath. And then when you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes. Continue to just focus on that breath. We actually breathe out longer than we breathe in to get rid of all the toxicity, all those uh, CO2, uh, get those out. 
and breathe in strength, breathe in confidence, breathe out the fear, breathe out the hesitation, breathe in all the power that you need to succeed and breathe out everything that's holding you back. Let it go. It's gone. Keep focusing on that breath. Calm yourself down. Your breath is the essence of your life. Each breath assures you life. And as you focus on that breath, I want you to think of all the things you're grateful for. Think of how grateful you are for your family. Be grateful for your friends, your coaches, the players you get to play with, the players you get to play against. Be grateful for the beauty of nature. Be grateful for the animals that we get to study, their beauty, their majesty, their power. Be grateful for all the skills that you've learned, all the talents that you have. Think of anything else that you're grateful for. Keep that breathing going. And then in your mind, I want you to look out and see a gate, that first gate. Remember, you're the creator of that gate. See it clearly. Remember those details. See, does it have a doorknob? Is it metal? Is it wooden? Like, be very specific. I want you to open up that gate and step into your place of nature. And just feel the power of your place of nature as you look around. See every detail that you can. The sky the water, the earth, the animals, the vegetation. See it. See it so clearly. Maybe even start to walk around in it a little bit and just see it in a new way that you've, you haven't seen it before. See it as you kind of like stake out your place of nature. Find that source of of shelter, source of water, and source of food for yourself. Just really see that as you walk around in your place of nature. Then I want you to feel your feet as you're walking. Just feel that power. With each step, you feel strong and powerful. Feel that. Each step, it's almost like electricity shoots through the ground up into your body, like feeding you with energy. Then I want you to hear the sounds, hear the rushing water, the crashing waves, the evergreen trees, uh, the, the, the uh, grass rustling in the wind, whatever it is. Birds flying overhead. Hear those sounds. And then finally, take in that respa breath in through your nose smell the beautiful fresh air the flowers you're on top of the world here this is your place of nature it's your sanctuary and it's all this time that you take to appreciate it that feeds you with power that's what gives you the power in this place of nature let it feed you now in your mind, I want you to look out and see your second gate. And as you step through that second gate, I want you to see yourself step into the gym that you are seeing yourself play in today or that you wanted to play in today, right? And as you step in here, I want you to walk towards the court. You're ready to go. Feel your body just so strong coming out of your place of nature. You feel it. Like 
you are just ready to go. In fact, if you can, you're sitting there, maybe just shake your arms, your legs, like bounce a little bit, like feel that energy, feel that energy go through your body. You're ready to go and then see yourself warm up. Just every touch of the ball feels perfect to you. You can feel the weight of the ball just so perfectly off your arms, off your hands, on your swing, like everything as you warm up starts to feel more and more under your control. You know how your body's a little stiff when you first start? You just feel that shaking out and you are feeling absolute control. You can put the ball where you want it, when you want it, how you want it. And now you're feeling primed and you're ready to go. I want you to step up to the court and you're going to look down at your belly. Your belly is your core. Your core abs, right? Look at your core and see the lion just jump out of your core. You are core today. Just see that lion just leap out with paws and, and the claws out, paws showing and just ready to strike. You're the lion today. You are the queen and kings of the jungle. Feel that power. With that, I want you to see yourself get set and get in your spot as the match gets started and see that first uh, swing, uh, that first serve come at, at your team and see yourself step in with confidence and power like the lion. That courage, you're never scared of anything. Step in, make the play with confidence. And then once you've executed that play, see your team win the point. And I want you to get to your next spot. And I want you to see your team serving the ball. Boom. See that serve go over the net. See yourself get in your defensive position. Read that and just triangulate just like the lion does. Boom. Ball setter, ball hitter. Get up there and clamp it down. Boom. Seeing everything. Turn around and roar like the lion with your awesome block. Or if you're on defense, an awesome, or if you're in a back row, awesome dig. Whatever it is, just, just let it out. See yourself now with so much confidence after two amazing plays. Just hear yourself roar like the lion and your voice just travels to all your teammates. They hear exactly what you're going to do. They know exactly what they're going to do and you're ready. See the next play come at you and see yourself dominate again. You're feeling so strong. You're feeling so confident. See yourself knowing exactly where to be every single time. See the next play come at you. See yourself reading the game, watching that ball and knowing just exactly where to go because you can see it. You can see where the hitter's swinging at. You can see where the server's going with the ball. You can see when the setter is going to dump. It's like you have this sixth sense and you're able to just fly because as the lion, you always know where you're supposed to be. Feel that power. See yourself now make another play. And see your teammates get pumped. See, your teammates get so excited because they're realizing that you're a beast. Hear them cheer for you. That roar of the lion, you hear it from your teammates. They're roaring back at you. Feel that power in your pride. Now I want you to see yourself as that game goes on. Feel it. It's against a tough opponent. But you just seem to step in time and time again and make play after play. See a tough moment. See a t it, where it's tied really close down to the end of that match. And see yourself, just say to yourself, I am core. Look down at your stomach. See that lion jump out of your, your core. You are core. Feel it. Make the play. See, see the ball come off your hands. See the ball come off your arms, whatever your position is. And see your team win the point and that turns the tide of the match. See yourself win that match. Now I want you to go to the final match of this tournament. 
and you've been dominant all day. Everybody has said to you, man, you're a beast today. And you feel so powerful and strong. See yourself step into this. Feel that the crowd is excited. Everybody's watching. All the other teams are done for the day. It's just you. Feel those jitters come into you as you get started. And just take that respa breath. Take one of those respa breaths right now. In for four counts. Out for six counts. Look down and see that lion just jump out. You're not worried about anything. You're a beast. You know exactly where to be today. You know exactly how to execute. You're going to pounce on the ball like it's your prey. You're going to attack the other team like you're attacking your prey. Feel that power, and now I want you to see the game get started. See yourself just get off to a great start. Every touch of the ball. See yourself in your capacity, your, your role, just touching the ball and it's perfection. It goes exactly where you want it to go and, and see yourself win that point. That's power. You're in absolute control. You have all the control. You're not worried about anything. You're there to be felt and heard. If you're a setter, shout out to the, your hitter. Scream at him. If you're a hitter, roar as you spike that ball. If you're a passer, Roar as you communicate with your teammates to have them get out of the way to let them know you got the ball. Execute now as you come down the final stretch. See this game go back and forth, back and forth. It's a battle. But you know exactly where to be because you are the lion. See yourself roar and step into a play and just make an incredible block or an incredible dig on defense. And just see your team get fired up. You're pumped. It's coming down to the home stretch and they're not going to stop you because you are the kings and queens of the jungle. Feel that. Focus right here. It's the end of the championship match. You're down three points. You've got to find something somewhere. You've got to want the ball. See yourself call for the ball. See yourself hoping that the other team will come at you. Well, they'll hit the ball to you because you know exactly where to be. You're the lion. See yourself now. Step in and make the play and just put the ball away. Get the ball where it needs to go. Win the point. Now you're only down two. You're ready. This ball, this play, be ready for it. It's coming to you. And you're excited. You're hungry. Man, the chance for your prey to come straight to you, you don't even have to hunt it down. Get it. Feel it come to you and just snatch it out of the air. Make that play. Now you're only down one. See yourself do this again and again and again. Three more times. I want you to play it out in your mind until you win the match. See it. Three plays in your mind and win that match. Now I want you to celebrate, roar like the lion, high five your teammates, run around like a crazy person. You just won the tournament. Just get jacked, get excited, feel that energy and power and that success. Do what you do when you win. Look up to the heavens, look up to your parents, yell at your coaches, all those things you do, point at your teammates like you did it, you, it was you, you were awesome. And see them point back at you. You were a beast today. With that power, I want you to step off the court and walk towards your second gate out of that gym. Step through it and back into your place of nature. Feel that exhaustion, man. You just gave it all today. Feel that. See yourself in there in your place of nature and go find that source of fresh water. Go up to it and take a drink. Cup it with your hands or maybe with a, a ladle and take a drink. Feel that enter your body, strengthening you and empowering you, rejuvenating your body. Take one last deep rest by breath. 
feel that strength and power from your place of nature. It wants to feed you. All you have to do is tap into it with your respa breath. With that, I want you to look out and see your first gate. Walk back through it and open your eyes because you are game ready. Awesome. I want to hear it. How do you feel right now? Amazing. Strong. Powerful. Nice. Relaxed. Empowered. Yeah. Confident. In control. Stuff blocks. You had a ton of stuff blocks. I love it. Calm. Relax, strong, like you can do anything. I know, right? Imagine when you guys get the chance to take this feeling into a match. Oh my gosh, you guys are going to be like, this really is real stuff. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited for you guys. This is awesome, like a champion. Cool. Very good. Um, I don't know why, but like, I, how do you chat? Like, is the chat at the top? No, I scroll up and down on the chat and I can't, I can't chat. It's weird. If you click on like the chat thing, if you go, it's at like the very bottom where you can actually type it. Uh, may, maybe it's because, here, hold on, let me, hey, that might be, no? I don't know. Mine doesn't have it. Bizarre. <laughs> That's all right. Um, I don't need chat. I can read. I can read your chat. Cool. Uh, all right. Any uh, any other thoughts? We did it. We went a little longer today. I challenged you. I let you guys control some of it. And I purposely uh, stayed out of the details a couple times to kind of let you guide yourself. That way you guys can get a little stronger at guiding yourself, right? Oh, in the beginning, when we were warming up, you said like the line came out of your core because for some reason, then for like the rest of the match, I like saw like an actual lion like watching me. <laughs> it was so weird, but it kind of like motivated me. I don't know. It was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. So there's a, um, one of my good friends um, his name is Bob Cattell, K-I-T-T-E-L-L. -L. So if you guys are interested, he has, he is one of the uh, most expert memorization experts, uh, most expert, ex expert, expert, memorization experts, I think is what I meant to say. <laughs> and uh, he has on Udemy, uh, U-D-E-M-Y, right? Udemy, he has a course that's like 12 bucks. Right now, it fluctuates between like nine bucks and 15 bucks, something like that. That's how Udemy does their stuff. But um, he's a friend of mine and I've gone through all of his stuff. But part of visualization, it, you know, and the memorization piece, if you can create things that trigger you, sometimes it's something like core. Core sounds like, you know, it's even though it's C O U R for courage. It reminds me of the core of your stomach. And so I just love seeing a lion jump out of my core because then, boom, I associate it real quick, core, my core, right? Same thing with the hard hat. Gowie, get on with it, like get, getting on with it, going, going and be like that construction worker, right? So sometimes that will serve as a great trigger for you. Sometimes you just need to say lion, right? Your coach needs to yell, be the lion or you, your parents or a teammate, right? And so you guys are going to have fun with this come, come, you know, the season next season, right? Or it, hopefully if, if we get a chance to get in some tournaments here um, before we're all said and done with this season, you know, then, uh, you know, for sure, like you guys are going to be like saying these things to each other and it's, it's just going to be awesome triggering each other. So, all yeah, right. I want to add yeah. something real quick. Um, I know a lot of you guys are trying to work on adding – detail to your to your visualization and i just want to kind of call to your attention that there's probably a lot more detail in there than you're even giving yourself credit for right now and so if you if you think back 
and just ask yourself, what, what color was the volleyball that you were playing with in your visualization today? I think you guys can all kind of figure that out, but you didn't think about it consciously at the time. And the same thing is like, what color was the court? What, who was the other team you were playing against? What uniforms were you, were you wearing? Like all this stuff was, was in there, but you may not have necessarily thought that you were doing it on purpose. But, but give yourself credit for that. It, your, your mind is really good at creating those details, similar to like a dream. Um, but you may not know exactly why it, it's there, or where it came from. Uh, but if, if you can ask yourself those questions now, I think it'll help your brain kind of populate that stuff the next time you go through it as well. That's a great point, Garrett. That's a great point. Um, uh, yeah, give yourselves credit. Like, there's if you go and think about it. Oh yeah, you're right. Like, I did have a lot of that detail. Very good. Okay, we're nine forty-five, so we've got fifteen minutes left. Um, how about we jump into our next animal that we'll be doing uh, next week? Ooh, next week we have our special guest. It, um, um, is it that? Is it? Okay, I won't. I won't try to. To we can we can talk about it after. But uh, okay, if we have a special guest, and this is this special guest going to be like participating, like in in the game ready with us? We're still crafting what we're going to end up doing uh, next week. Okay. We have some ideas, um, but. Yeah, we're just going to kind of develop that plan as it as we get in, in contact and communication. Okay, cool. So, um, all right. No, no, I think I'm going to do – I think we're going to stick with the one that I had prepared. I feel good about it. And uh, I was thinking about going with another one, but sometimes – yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. Okay, cool. All right. So we're going to go with Co today. Oh. All right? My daughter – likes to call it Coco. Now she'll be, she's nine years old. She'll be, she'll be a little bit jealous if I share Co with you guys. So just know that. And so she likes me to call her Coco. This is when it gets fun. Like she takes on her own little identity. Like she wants to be Coco, right? She's like, I'm Coco. And Co is C-O. It stands for commitment. Commitment is the heart of successful endeavors commitment is the heart right that passion that heart no one can take that away from you right how much heart do you have so co is the rhino the rhinoceros and the rhinoceros is an awesome animal it is a deadly animal and one of the things i love the most and i'll lead with this one of the things i love the most about the the, uh, the rhino is they commit to the death when they fight it's mortal combat so as they, as scientists have studied rhinoceroses, is that how you say it? Rhinoceroses, um, hippopotamuses, right? Uh, as they study rhinos, we'll keep it simple, uh, they find that 50% of all male rhinos and 30% of all female rhinos at some point will die from mortal combat. That's a high mortality rate. And this is fighting other rhinos. So 50, you know, about 40% of the entire population dies from mortal combat. In other words, when they get mad and they want to turn it on, you can't stop them. I was just watching, has anybody watched uh, some of the documentary on, uh, I forget what it's called, but the documentary on the bulls, Michael Jordan. Yeah, good. So I was watching Charles Barkley uh, a separate interview with Charles Barkley about Michael Jordan and, and John Calipari were talking. John Calipari was the coach of Kentucky. And where's he coaching now? Is he still? I forget. Yep, he's still at Kentucky. Okay. So, and, and 
they were both telling stories because John used to coach in the NBA also. It, they would tell stories about Michael Jordan. You did not want to tick him off. If you ticked off Michael Jordan, you knew he was going to lock down his guy that he was defending. That guy wouldn't score another point. John Calipari told a story of like one guy that ticked him off and he shut him down. Didn't score another point for the next three quarters. Is that domination or what? That's absolute commitment to stop your player. Right? Imagine if you had that ability to just lock in, to fully commit. And no matter what happens, you are going to lock somebody down. Or no matter what happens, you are going to be a beast that nobody can stop. And when you start to get that belief, you become unstoppable. I've had matches where I just felt that and I swung harder and, oh my gosh, I felt like I was going to pop the ball a couple times. No joke. Like the way the ball hit the ground so hard, like, and I would just scream and yell. And the other team was always intimidated because I would just scream and yell, right? And it's just like, and after I bounce a ball straight down through a three-man block, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can do that too, right? I'm not suggesting you always hit straight down. You should be aiming high and deep uh, to, <laughs> hit to the deepest part of the court. That's usually the best, but not always, right? Yeah, um, but I love this feeling that the rhino is just unstoppable when it commits itself and it's mortal combat. It's going to the death and you cannot stop it. It's got that huge horn. It's got its weapon. You've got your weapons. What's your weapon? Maybe your weapon is you have great hands on the block. You can turn well, right? Maybe your weapon is your footwork. Maybe your weapon is how amazingly flat your platform is. And if you can just angle that ball, if you can just get the angle you want with your platform, maybe as a setter, you don't have the most butter hands. But you place the ball in the right spot every time. Think about what your specific like strength is. That is your horn. That one horn. What's that one horn that you can use to take down the enemy? There's something that you do that nobody else can do. And they can't do it like you because you're unique. There's nobody else on, on the earth like you. Nobody on this earth that looks exactly like you, that moves the way you do, that thinks the way you do. No one. So there's absolutely a tool somewhere that you have that nobody else has. The other thing, I want to add this element, the, the other cool thing. So the rhino has a buddy. Does anybody know what the rhino's favorite little buddy is? He's got a buddy. And you'll see him. Anytime you see a rhino, you'll see these animals too. They're birds. I don't know if someone was saying it. Or someone's Googling it. <laughs> birds. We got a few people that mentioned the, a bird. Okay, cool. Sorry, I didn't see it somehow or hear it. Um, oh, maybe because I'm like scrolled way up on my chat. Yes, the oxpecker bird. Yes. Someone Googled that. <laughs> or did somebody know that? Did somebody seriously know that? No one's owning up to it anyway. So it's the ox pecker. The interesting thing is the, the, the rhino is actually a very aware animal. But the only reason we found that they are aware is because of the ox pecker. If they didn't have the ox pecker, they actually wouldn't see a lot of things coming. And so they have like all these ox peckers. They found like when a human approaches 
a rhino, the rhino cannot detect it very well if there's no ox peckers around. It's like 50% of the time. So it's like flipping a coin. You might as well flip a coin, right? But when the, the ox peckers are around them, they can detect any animal, humans, other animals, 97% of the time. So I want you to think about this in terms of as a commitment, not just to you being dominant, not just a commitment to your specific um, intention in that match or that practice or whatever. I want that. I want that absolute commitment. But I also want you to think about the commitment to your team. I want you to think about how with your team, you're more aware. You play at higher levels. There's something called tacit knowledge. This is geeking out a little bit. T-A-C-I-T. -T. This is more for the coaches. You guys can, you look a little bit more. There was a study, a study done on the NBA, and I can get you that study if you guys want. Study done on the NBA in the 80s and, or on the 80s and uh, early 90s teams and why the Lakers, Celtics, Pistons, and Bulls won so many championships and dominated the league right? And the Sixers did too early in the 80s. But the reason was because of tacit knowledge. They stuck together. They played together longer. They hung out with each other outside of the game. They knew each other's minds so well. They knew where each other were going to be, what they were thinking. They knew what the person was going to do in this situation. Steve Kerr knew if Michael drove to the hole late in the game that he was going to get a triple sometimes a quadruple team so he needed to be in that corner or on on he if somebody else was in that corner he needed to rotate to the uh what why am i spacing the the angle what's what do we call the the elbow the elbow uh three point shot right and so that kind of knowledge of our teammates and being with our teammates and being more aware because of our teammates is something that is amazing about the Rhino. So I want you to feel this commitment. You are co, as my daughter likes, Coco, right? And I'm telling you, I did this for my daughter the first time and she's, you know, this is when she was eight in soccer. And she's a very girly girl. You know, did I mention this before? No, I didn't, right? She's a very girly girl. Like, you know, don't touch me. But she's got these nice, thick, strong thighs, strong legs. And as an she's really stable. And, um, and so she can go into a pile and come out with the ball. It's awesome to watch. Well, um, but she's a very shy girl, a very calm girl, and and just a little my little princess, obviously my only girl. <laughs> I love her cute little cheeks. I want to kiss them all the time, and uh, and I uh, I gave her this game ready before a practice, this Coco game ready, and then. I went to her game two days later and I didn't even think about it. I'm on the phone, I think, doing like taking a business call, you know, like, you know, like the dad in the movie Hook. If you've ever seen the movie Hook, probably, probably should keep my phone down. Uh, but uh, so I'm doing that and I'm like, she's just dominating because what would happen is she, someone would take the ball from her. So I gave her this game ready a couple days for, before and said, hey, don't, if someone takes the ball, you take it right back to the death. You're committed. You are Coco. You're a rhino. Nobody can take the ball from you to the death, right? And uh, I went like all of a sudden, like she's just like dominating. She's taking the ball. Nobody can get the ball from her. When they get it from her, she takes it right back and then passes it to a teammate and the teammate scores. And I was like, whoa, who is this girl? And then I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> we gave, we, I gave her that game ready two days ago. For some reason, sometimes younger kids can like sustain it longer. Um, and so she sustained it for like two days. It was still in her mind, like that she was the rhino and, uh, and, and it was amazing to watch. And she did the exact things that we talked about. Um, so, and if you go in my highlights, there's probably at least one or two of my little daughter 
playing at least if not futsal, you know, if, if not outdoor soccer, futsal. But it's powerful, guys. It's powerful. So I'll leave that with you guys to think about this week, and we'll do a co game ready next week. So pumped. All right. Any any last words from anybody? Anyone? All right. Uh, I really did enjoy the idea uh, of the ox pepper bird because, I mean, as we all know, volleyball is one of those unique sports that you literally cannot win the match by yourself. All right. In basketball, you can rely on uh, a high-level scorer. Uh, in soccer, there's a lot of, of uh, assists, but if you have a Cristiano Ronaldo or a Messi, they'll take over the match. It's literally impossible to do that in volleyball. So having that awareness of what your teammate's going to do and, and when is incredible. I, I think one of the, uh, the greatest examples is like high-level teams. It almost seems like a dance that they're performing because everything is happening sync in, in sync where there is no small like glitch. Everyone's doing what they're supposed to, when they're supposed to. And it almost looks like they're reading each other's minds. And I think that's, that's the coolest thing in my mind where the oxpecker is like that with the rhino that – this rhino becomes absolutely instinct once he has his buddies around. And without it, he like the weaknesses are revealed. So I think relying on our teammates, like the rhino relies on the ox pecker, ox pecker uh, would be huge. It would unlock a lot of our, our abilities there. Yep. And then I want to – I just end with this challenge for you guys for this week. Watch videos about rhinos. Go on National Geographic. Go Just go to YouTube and like – unique facts about rhinos facts about rhinos learn everything you can about the rhino this week so that you can just embody that rhino cool all right guys that's that's uh that's it for today thanks so much for coming um just so excited for the progress you're all making and have an amazing week and share this stuff with your parents let them know what you're doing and uh and have a great week. Thank you.